welcome to my April favourites. By the time you are actually watching this, I will be in Palm Springs, California. At the time of filming this, I'm leaving in a week and hmm, I've just got a lot to organise. It is tray stressful because I have this whole other thing to think about on top of all of the usual stresses when it comes to travel, but it's fine. By the time you're watching this, I will be there and it'll be great. Do let me know if you would like a travel vlog because I have stopped kind of filming them a lot because I feel uncomfortable getting out the camera and things. You'd think as someone who's been on YouTube for seven years that that wouldn't be an issue, but I just feel a bit orcs about it. But if that's something that you'd be interested in watching, then do let me know and I'll see if I can muster up any courage. So this month's favourites is very book heavy and there is a good reason behind that and it is because of these bad boys. These are Manu AirPods. Du, 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 du. They are basically Apple's wireless headphones. They are pretty expensive but I've always used Apple headphones so I know that they like sit in my ear really well and like my ears are used to them and I knew I wanted a pair of wireless ones and do, 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 do. but basically I've read so many books this month because of these and because of Audible. I basically just listened to four audiobooks this month. How? 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 And I read two physical books as well. I love these and I love that I'm reading so much more because of them. It is great. So let me tell you about the books that I have read. Let's go physical first because it means I can actually show you things. Dee -dee 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 -dee. This is How Do You Like Me Now by Holly Vaughan. This is the proof cover, the real cover, Dee -dee -dee -dee. looks like this. I can't remember when it's out, but it is out <laughs> then. Holly normally writes a lot of amazing YA, but this is her first adult novel and I bloody loved it. Basically, it's about this woman, she's like in her early 30s and she is a successful best-selling author of a book that she wrote about how messed up her 20s was and just being like, screw it all. Now, like it's like six years later and she is in this really unhappy relationship. A lot of her friends around her are getting married, having babies. And on the surface, she's very like, I've got it together. I'm super successful career lady. And on the inside, she's like breaking down. It is very funny. And it's portrayal of social media and the way someone like Tori, who's like a semi-celebrity, uses it to portray this idea of her life and the way that she can manipulate things knowing exactly what the response is going to be. Can relate, can relate to that, but also there's like moments where you absolutely hate Tori and then you absolutely love her. And if you want just to like get angry about the wedding industry, then this is the book for you. This book is awesome, you should read it. In April, I also read The Surface Breaks by Louise O'Neill. Look at this cover, isn't it gorgeous and the inside is like oh i think this book comes out at some point in may and it is a reimagining of the little mermaid i love the disney version of the little mermaid and i even made a video a couple years ago um called is the little mermaid feminist so you can go watch that if you fancy it this is more based off the original fairy tale which is a lot more dark if you don't know how it ends, I shall not spoil it for you, but it's, it's dark. And this is very much in that vein. It's this weird balance between being super innocent because it's like a YA book, but then also being like really dark. And a lot of the things that happen in it are just really heavy. So I'm like, is this YA or is this adult? Like I'm not 100% sure, but it is fantastic. Lots of good stuff in this. And also we are interviewing Louise for the Banging Book Club and maybe by the time this video is out there is the podcast available for you to listen to of us chatting to Louise about this. Asking for it, which is one of Louise's books, was the first ever book we read for Banging Book Club. So we love her. When this book was first announced I was so, so excited and it definitely did not let me down. Now on to the audiobooks I read, which I don't have like physical things of, which is kind of sad. So I listened to The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer, which is a book I have been meaning to read for ages. If you want to have any idea about that book, 
then just go watch her TED talk of the same title. She is a very interesting person. She is a musician and most of the book is kind of about her career and her journey, but interwoven into that about asking. So she used to be a living statue and would hand out flowers to people who put money in like a little basket. And with her music, she's had like one of the most successful crowdfunding campaigns. And the book is mostly, I would say, about her relationship with her fans and her relationship with the people who she asks for help and the people who give her help. And it's just really fascinating, especially as someone who has fans and audience and you know sometimes I ask you for things like to sponsor this YouTube channel or Patreon or ask you to buy merch. There's often this shame around asking and being like oh sorry it's that time when I like sell you stuff now or oh. where she kind of just says no that's all bollocks and often you'll find is that people want to help and people want to give back and if you just have like that human connection of like hey here's a thing I'm gonna ask you to do this thing but if you don't want to do it that's fine but if you do that's great that was a really interesting book and I would recommend definitely listen to her TED talk and if you like that read the book I also listened to The Colour Purple by Alice Walker which was April's book for Banging Book Club. I had read it before but I could barely remember and so listening to it and it's actually read by the author was just amazing and yeah I love that book. I feel like it's such a famous book I don't really have to explain what it's about but it has themes of gender and race and religion, self-worth and confidence and sexuality and all of that stuff so would recommend. I also listened to Every Woman by Jess Phillips. Jess Phillips is an MP for one of the Birmingham constituencies. She's an MP and the book is really fascinating. It is a lot about her work at Women's Aid and her career there and then how she decided that she wanted to become an MP and make some real change in the world and then basically her just no bars hold just like telling the truth about parliament, what it's like to be a woman in parliament, um, a woman in politics. It's very interesting and made me realise that I absolutely do not want to become an MP, ever. No. Good on you Jess, but no thank you. <laughs> and then the last book that I read this month I also listened to and that is 1984 by George Orwell, which is another one that is so famous that I probably don't need to tell you what it's about. But yes, I hadn't actually read 1984 until now. I'd seen the film, but I don't remember the film. So I went into reading the book really not knowing what happens other than the rats. I remembered the rats. I think everyone remembers the rats. But now I want to see the film again. So 1984 is a depressing read. If you want to feel sad and hopeless, read 1984. So that's all the books that I read in April. I read six books. If you are someone like me and is constantly like, there are so many books that I want to read but I'm a slow reader and I don't have enough time, audiobooks audio books but I am also the kind of person who like wants to have a physical library of books to show people to be like oh yes reading as a part of my identity. Like most of the books on the shelf I haven't read. I don't know why it's taken me this long to get into audiobooks. I was so against them for so long because I was like I want the physical books and now I'm just like audiobooks yay. For some reason in April I don't think I saw any new films. I don't think I really went to the cinema. I did watch One Hour Photo, which is an old movie that Robin Williams is in, which is really creepy. <laughs> I'd never heard of this film before, but it's about this guy who Robin Williams plays and he works in a photo developing place and he gets a bit obsessed with this family who keep coming in to get their photos developed there. That's all I'll say. So finally, 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 after loads of people saying that this is such a great TV series, I have started watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I know I'm so behind. It's in like what it's fourth or fifth season now. Well guess what? I'm in season two now. Yay! So I actually have watched bits of it before when I've been on planes and they have like random episodes of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. So I've seen some bits. So we were watching season one and I was like, oh, I have seen this episode, but just completely out of context. Now I'm actually watching it in order and can see the progression of the characters, but I just love it. It is so 
funny. And if you were wondering, I think we've decided that I am a cross between Amy and Gina, if I were to be any of the characters, which I am okay with. I think I identify more as an Amy, but a lot of people have told me that I'm Gina. But I'm like, that's great, she is super confident. Oh, also in terms of TV, I'm not sure if I can call this a favourite yet, because we've only watched like one or two episodes, but we were pissing ourselves laughing at it. It's on Netflix, it's um, a Japanese cartoon, and it's called Agre... Agre Rutsuko? I'm I don't know if I'm saying that right at all. Each episode's like 15 minutes long, maybe less, but it's basically about this 25 year old red panda who works in an office all day and she's just doing the daily grind and the way that she lets out her anger is by going to a karaoke bar every night and singing death metal. We did not know that going in and just started watching it and like, oh look, cute little panda, da 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 da, and then suddenly she starts screaming death metal and we were like, what? I think I'm gonna watch more of that because that was very entertaining. Has anyone else heard of that? Watched it? How does the rest of the season go? Is it is it good? So this month I also have a game favourite. Since me and Dan finished Divinity Original Sin 2, we've been looking for a new co-op turn-based strategy game and we seem to have found one that we very much enjoy. And it's called For the King and it's basically fantasy, turn-based, we're a team, we're fighting bad guys, it's great. But the difference with this one and what makes it really frustrating is that once you both die, you're dead and you have to start from the beginning again. But the idea is that when you're playing it through, you kind of like learn new things and you collect these books and then when you die, you can then spend those books in the store to get like new characters or new interactions or new objects so that when you start from the beginning again, there are like a few different things. We are still yet to make it anywhere near to the end. We don't even know where the end is because we just keep dying. There was one game where I accidentally left Dan stranded on an island, I sailed the ship off, forgot to pick him up, and then a kraken came and sunk the ship and then Dan was just stranded on this island and that was it. And we were like, well, can't do anything now. Has anyone else played For the King? Please give us tips on how to be better at it. And finally, it wouldn't be a Hannah Witten favourites video if I didn't include some underwear. Yay! You may have seen on my social media that I recently did a photo shoot with Linda Blacker, who is an amazing photographer. Just go follow her on Instagram. And we basically did a body positive underwear, stoma bag, scar photo shoot, which photos and behind the scenes video will be out soon, so watch this space. But I basically got to buy underwear on my business card, which was amazing. Because of the size of my boobs, my bras are really expensive, and if I want a fancy matching set, then they charge you ridiculous for the underwear to match the very specialist bra. But no, I was like, haha, this is for work. This one is my absolute favorite. It's just so cute. It's like this pale blue and it's got little cute yellow bow on it. The underwear's the same. Boop, boop, boop. And then the other one is this pink. And again, just matching sets. And now, now I've got matching underwear and I'm like, yay. Very happy about the new underwear and very excited to show you the photographs. All right, that is it from my April favorites. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it thumbs up if you did and let me know in the comments some of the things that you have been enjoying this month and if you want to see a travel vlog from LA maybe. I don't know, I'm not making any promises. <laughs> but yeah, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss another video. Bye!